uh, it's Wednesday, 1230. That means it's time for our weekly SOS house call. She got her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame today. Oh, okay. Joining Salt and Peppa, MC Light, Moni Love, and Roxanne Shante. So it was kind of a, yeah. of a Hall of Fame type situation. All right. Dr. Brad Raphael uh, joining us on the show. Dr. Brad, always great to have you on. How are you today? I'm I'm doing great. Thanks, guys. I appreciate uh, I pre- appreciate the having me on. All right, we're going to start with uh, with a little bit of breaking news, and that is uh, that one Tommy DeVito has been named the starter for the Giants' next game uh, Sunday in Dallas. And the reason he's been named the starter is that uh, Daniel Jones, as we all saw, unfortunately went down with an ACL injury. Um, you know, we've seen players at different positions come back with different timelines. So can you kind of take us through for a quarterback? What is the ACL rehab like, and when is it realistic to see him back on the field? Should he be ready to go in time for uh, for training camp, let's say, for next year? So that that's the, the million dollar, or in his case, about $160 million question or whatever. Um, that's a, it's a great question. And, you know, with, a, with any type of ACL injury, um, a couple things. First of all, you've got two, two time frames of play. One is the surgery and then the recovery period after the surgery. And these can be affected by, you know, any other other injuries in addition to the ACL, for instance, an MCL, a meniscus injury. You, you, um, but let's assume it's just a straightforward ACL reconstruction. I tell people, and, and, and statistics show, that it takes the body about a year to fully incorporate the new ACL where we take tissue from another part of your body. That becomes your new ACL for an ACL reconstruction. It takes a full year to heal. Now, that doesn't mean it takes a full year to return to sport, but it takes a full year to heal that ligament for when you put the new tissue in. Having said that, um, it's usually done with an outpatient procedure. You, um, in a high level athlete, we take it from either their own tissue in front of their kneecap, sometimes from the quadriceps, sometimes from the hamstring, or sometimes we could take it from a cadaver, meaning donated tissue. But let's say in, in Daniel Jones's, it's probably the gold standard in the NFL is probably the patel tendon, meaning that, that tendon right in front of your kneecap. It's an outpatient procedure. It takes about, oh, about an hour, somewhere between an hour and a half-ish, an hour, hour and a half goes home, crutches for about two to three weeks, and then they actually start therapy almost the next day in someone like him. Um, Take the stitches or staples out a week or 10 days later, start, continue the therapy, and usually it's about three to four months before you're able to run or jog. Um, With a goal at about that six-month point to getting back to some non-contact sport-specific stuff, meaning the cutting, the pivoting, the things like that. The problem is, is that we cannot speed up the body's ability to heal that ACL. That graft will take 12 months no matter what. The goal is you try to strengthen the muscles around the knee to allow the, the athlete, the student athlete, or the patient to come back even sooner. For instance, if he gets really strong um, and has his full motion, you're, you're looking at maybe nine to ten months in a, in, a, in a perfect situation. A lot of people love to quote, a couple years back, Adrian Peterson came back in about six months. The reason why you don't see many of those, because you, you look at the NBA players usually take at least 14 to 16 months to get back, is because... We let everyone go back at six months. The, the rate of tear, re-tear is, ex, is just so high, exponentially high. So that's why it's a balance. You want to start as soon as possible, but if you go back too soon, that graft is not strong enough and you re-tear, and that's the, the biggest thing you got to worry about. So it's a balance, but I would say about nine or ten months before he would be really healthy enough to get back to playing. And ten months would be what? It would be September. So you, you're thinking he probably does miss the beginning of training camp, and and you know, what? I, I bet with him he probably would miss the beginning of training camp. But I would anticipate they're going to push him to get back before you won't see. You won't probably won't see him in any of the preseason sure. games. But I bet you're going to have him uh, come back. You know, probably by the beginning of the season. Having said that. That. You know, look at look at the statistics of, of guys the first year back. Um, you know, whether it's a running back, a quarterback, or any kind of defensive player. You know, you're looking at. You know, it, it takes really a good six to eight months 
once you start playing to really get back to where you were because it's not like he could just flip that switch on. So I would anticipate he'll play next year, but it's going to take another year before you see him back to where, where he's at his baseline. All right, uh, let's stay in that division. Uh, let's stay at the quarterback position, and, and let's talk about Jalen Hurts, who was uh, wearing a brace a couple weeks ago. Uh, he since said that he was uh, playing through a bone bruise, uh, which came up again. He was you know slow to get up uh, in that win over the Cowboys on Sunday. Is that an injury that's just kind of like a pain tolerance thing? And you know, is it possible for an injury like that to to fully heal during a bye week, or does he need you know more than uh, you know more than a, a week to get over something like that? So that, that's another great question in that, you know, they're not all bone bruises are created equal. You know, for an ACL tear, for instance, it's torn, you have surgery. Bone bruise, you can have a bone bruise, and I've had some patients and, and athletes get back in a few days. Sometimes it can take three to four weeks to get back because, you know, not all bone bruises are created equal. Um, and it's really, a, it becomes a pain tolerance issue as long as there's no damage to the actual bone. If it truly is a bone bruise, there can be a lot of swelling that's incorporated with that. You got to get the swelling down before you can go back to play because you don't have the function. But usually with anti inflammatories, maybe a little bit of protected weight bearing, it's a couple weeks before you're back to f- full activity. So a bye week seems pretty reasonable. Having said that, you know, a really bad bone bruise can take, you know, four to six weeks to sometimes get fully, um, you know, full recovery. All right. Uh, how about Aaron Rodgers? Uh, we saw him uh, walk into the locker room without crutches uh, over the weekend. Uh, that's two months out from from suffering the from the injury. Um, is that a, that yeah. a big deal or no? I mean, that was that was just Monday night we saw that, right? Um, is that a, yeah. is that a big deal that he was walking without crutches? That um, well, sure, it's a big deal. The you know, but the bigger deal is 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 what everybody wants to know. Is it a big enough deal that he can go back and play this year? Yeah. Um, and so it's one thing to be, and and honestly, you know, with an Achilles repair, you know, you're looking at you're on crutches for you know usually about four, six weeks ish, you're in a boot. He's it looks like he's out of the boot, you know, at that eight to ten week point. He's he's maybe a little bit ahead of schedule. The the thing is is that um as you know, walking around without a boot is a big difference than you know, running, jogging and, and getting tackled as a quarterback. So I think it's a, an incredibly huge deal that he is actually doing as well as he is and some was saying they, they saw a video of him throwing the football which is not easy on you know with with uh if you've got a bad foot but um or bad uh bad ankle but i think that's ex- extremely encouraging um i mean honestly i think it would be challenging for somebody to um even the best case scenario come back in, at that high level within you know four to six months after an ACL reconstruct, I mean, uh, Achilles repair. So I think even in a perfect situation, you know, there's a, uh, no pun intended. He's got to walk before he can run. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's on your feet, it's walking, then you got to run, then you got to get your strength back and be able to really protect yourself. And I, I think it's, it's probably, uh, you know, um, uh, very unlikely that he's able to play by the end of the season, but I think it's a great deal that he's out of the boot already. And speaking of Achilles injuries, uh, Cam Akers, Vikings running back now, uh, he made it back in five and a half months when he tore his, his Achilles on 2021, in 2021. He's now uh, torn the other one. Um, it, yeah. I, I guess he had the, the speed bridge procedure the first time yeah. around. Is that something that can be done on, on any Achilles tear, or does it have to be like a certain Achilles tear? And, and uh, you know, is it is it possible that he's back in that six-month time frame again? So, you know, that's another great question, and that, um, and, the, and the short answer is not every Achilles tear is amenable to that, to that speed bridge is what they call it. And what the speed bridge is, is what it, it's, you basically put some extra sutures in the repair and attach it to your, your heel bone. Uh, your calcaneus. And what it does is it gives you a little bit of backup fixation. So by unloading the, if you think about what the Achilles is, it's a rope at the at the back of your ankle and it tears. And so what we do is we have to sew it back together in order for the body to heal. And so what the speed bridge does is it puts a little extra suture in to unload that repair so that it takes by le- the, the theory is there's less tension on the repair it'll heal quicker because that, whatever you, whatever implant you use or whatever construct you still need that achilles to heal and so the goal is by taking some of that tension off it heals quicker and if it heals quicker you're back a little bit quicker but even you know even i i that's amazing he came back in five and a half months but that's that's would probably be the the earliest that i would see uh that i could imagine an, any type of achilles uh injury coming back 
Uh, all right, Dr. Brett, anything else uh, that we didn't touch on that, uh, that's going on in the world of sports these days as, as it relates to injuries that you want to hit on today? Well, I tell you, the, the, this, this just rash of Achilles, you know, I feel like yeah. those are, you know, just more. And you, it used to be ankle sprains. Now you're seeing Achilles, not just in NFL and NBA. And I don't know if it's a product of, you know, strengthening, over-strengthening, putting more tension on, on these tendons um, and just, you know, landing awkwardly um, because everyone's getting bigger and stronger. But, you know, I, it, it's my public service announcement to just, uh, it's not just happening to high-level athletes. you got to stretch before you play especially the weekend warrior. You got to keep doing the stretching before you play so you can help prevent some of these injuries. Yeah. And that's, that's a really painful injury, right? The Achilles. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's painful and it's very disabling because you might, the, the description is, is, um, you know, if you had any friends that have had it or know anybody, they feel like it's a non-contact injury. You feel like you're playing tennis or basketball and you, and you look around, you feel a pop and it's like someone took a hammer, just the back of your ankle and they feel a pop and they, they turn around expecting to, you know, you know, want to punch someone because who, who did that to me? And it's usually a non-contact injury. So it can't be all, it can't be completely preventable, but some good stretching can help, help minimize the risk. All right. Great advice as always. Uh, Dr. Brad, thanks so much for coming on as always. We appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks so much guys. Have a great day. All right. It's our weekly SOS house call from the Syracuse Orthopedic Specialist. And with that, we'll hit a timeout. Uh, Another interview coming up next, Jeremy Freeman, CEO of Freeman Formula, joins us on the other side. Back after this on ESPN Radio.